Okay, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this necklace. Which is a snitch from Harry Potter. And all you're really going to need is some silver that is 0 0.66 millimeters. And you can use some copper, I'm sorry, some brass that is 0.8 millimeters, or you can use some 16 gauge wire. And this will make the centerpiece here. So, there's a couple ways you can make this center. One, you can just cut a circle out here and dome it, like I did with this. So this is completely hollow and domed using a doming block. Or you can melt down a piece of wire like this, which is 50 millimeters long and is made from 16 gauge wire. And melting it down will make a solid half round ball like this and like this. But to do this, you need a torch that can get hot enough to actually melt it. So I know a lot of people don't have a torch that can do that, so I suggest going with the doming route. And you, this is basically a doming block. And you use these to make it shape into it. Or if you have none of this and you don't want to deal with that, you can literally just cut a circle clean it up, and then solder it on. And I'll have a link to the file for this, because I made all this, and I'll have that in the description. So to get started with all this, I'm going to show the two different ways of making these, so you'll know how to do that. All right, so the first way I'm gonna show you is how to melt a piece of wire down into a ball. So for this one you're going to have to use something like this or something equivalent to this. So what I'm going to do is put it onto a charcoal block like that. Make sure you have ventilation because it's going to make a lot of smoke and then heat the entire piece and then go from one end and make sure to wear some sort of eye protection for this also and just kind of chase that end all the way over and then you could do the same thing backwards if it's going too far and if they break up like that, you can use some tweezers and just keep heating them. Until they melt together. As soon as it turns to a ball, you just want to stop. And the reason for that is if you heat brass for too long, which I've shown in other videos, it can explode. So I'm just going to quench it off the screen. And there it is. It's as quick and easy as that if you have the proper torch set up. So if you don't have a torch that can do that, you're going to have to cut a circle out. And I suggest using a jeweler saw to do this, or you can use a stamping method if you happen to have a circle stamp but I don't, so I'm going to use the saw.
But there we go. It's easy, easy as that. And this is the same size that is in the pattern that you can download. So basically all you do is glue that to your sheet of metal and cut it out. And you'll be able to make the same size. Or if you want to know what size it is, it's about 6 millimeters. So, once I have that all cut out, I'm going to clean up the edges a bit from the saw, just to make it completely round. You don't have to do this, but I like to just to keep everything as clean as possible. Once we're done with this, we're going to head back over to our heating area to anneal this piece so we can dome it easier. So I'm going to anneal this now using just a normal propane torch. go just until it gets red hot and then I'll quench it there we are so now I'm gonna take this and dry it off completely so I don't rust out my doming block because they're bare steel So for this, I'm just going to find whatever one it fits into, which looks like just about that one. And I'm going to go one up from that, just to start the doming and then move over to this one. So when doming these, just make sure you have one of these that will fit completely inside of the uh, block. If you need to, use some tweezers to handle this. So, come on, focus. You can see it's slightly domed now. And fits in there. So I'm going to switch tools. The other thing when doing this, make sure that you get it in the center as much as possible so it doesn't move on you and go up the sides. Yeah, like it's trying to do right now. So now it's a little bit more domed. This is the next one I'm going to do, and it's going to leave a ring around it because it's bigger than this. And so when you're hitting it in, it's going to actually scar up the outside of this, which should be fine because of how I'm going to finish everything off. But I'm going to heat this again so it becomes annealed because as you hammer stuff, it'll harden and it makes it harder to shape stuff. Okay, now that it's all annealed again, give this a shot. So I'm just going to lightly tap it in, because if you just go and hit it right away, it's going to move on you. And make sure you're doing this on a pretty sturdy surface. This isn't the sturdiest. It probably would have been better to use it over here, but this lines up better with the camera. So 
So now that it's domed even more, try to pop it out of here. There we go. So there's a nice domed piece now. And if you take it and the piece that we made, or I made earlier using the wire, they're getting close to being around the same size. Yes, this one is going to be taller, but they'll basically look pretty much the same once you're done. So for our dome piece, we're going to need to clean up the back of it because as you fold this, the edges are going to come up and make a sharp edge and if we're going to be soldering this down, we need it to be as flat as possible. So to do this, I'm just going to take some 220 bit sandpaper and sand the back of this. Just kind of pinch over the top of it and try not to sand my nails off. And just go in circles, or however you want, as long as it takes down the burr that's on the back of this. So there we go, it's all nice and flat now. So that's pretty much ready to solder on, other than it needs to be cleaned. As for this one, if you look at the back of it, it's already pretty much flat because of the flat surface I used to make it on. So this is pretty much ready to go also. It just needs to be cleaned to make sure that the soldering will work. And to clean both of them, you just put it into your pickling solution. So as I'm waiting for everything to pickle and clean off, I could actually start cutting this out. And you're gonna need to drill a couple holes to open up the loops at the end of this before doing this. I suggest doing it, you can do it afterwards, but I'm gonna do it now. And I'm just gonna use a center punch and a hammer to mark where those are going to be. When you're hammering these in, you don't have to go crazy or anything. Just, you're just marking where the drill is going to go through. And then I'm going to be using a very small drill bit. And drill this hole. So there we go. You can use a small or a larger drill bit and make it the exact size of the hole, but I don't have any of those exactly that same size on hand. So what I'm going to do is put my saw blade through either one of those and just saw out the rest of it. And this should be an extremely quick cut. And like I said, you can just use a larger drill bit to do this.
So yeah, that was pretty simple. So now I'm just going to cut out the smaller pieces of wings and then the entire back plate. Uh, you don't have to use this thickness. You can use whatever thickness you like. This won't change anything once you put it all together. The only thing that really matters is the size of the pattern. So if you want one of these to be bigger and scale this up, make sure that you scale up your centerpiece also. And the melting of the 50 millimeters will not work for your new piece. So I'm actually going to switch this out for a different bench pin. So the reason why I switched this out is so I can use these holes right here. And the reason for these holes is so you have more area holding your piece. Which make it a little bit easier to cut small finicky things. Also, when you cut this out, try to cut on the outside part of the lines. Besides when you get inside of the wing parts, try to cut down the center of them. The only problem with this setup is having a larger piece like this, it hits up here. So if this was completely flush, this would be perfect, but fortunately that doesn't work like that. And for those end cuts, I'm just going to cut down them and then back out and turn around and do the other side. Also, be very careful not to do what I just did and bend the piece. It's not that bad, you can bend that back. Just be very careful because you can snap those off or get them snagged. And now I'm going to have to go back after this and make sure everything is aligned properly. There we go, we got one piece done.
a little messy, but it's done. And there we go. Bend that back in shape. And I can put this to the side. So it doesn't really matter which order you cut these out. It's just as long as you cut them out. Also, if you don't feel comfortable cutting the in parts of the wings, I left lines there so you can just follow along the outline and then you can just use it like that. Go. There's the second one. So if you're wondering how I got the paper on to the metal, this is a label paper that I use with a actual label printer that's just sticky on the back. So I print out the design, peel off the back, and stick it on. You can just use a normal printer and normal printer paper and use a glue stick or a spray on glue and you'll get the same effect and it's a lot cheaper than buying an entire printer just to do this There we go. Now that I'm covered in expensive sparkles, I can put all this suit back together and see how it's going to look. So yeah, looks pretty good. Everything is within what I wanted it to be. And now I need to get it ready for um, slip soldering and not drop it on the ground like I just did. But I'm going to go get the golden ball or brass ball parts out of the pickling solution. So one thing I'm gonna do is clean up the little bit of um, burr that was left behind from sawing these. I'm not going to go over the edges, but I am going to go over this part because setting them down, there's a little bit of that burr that lifts them up and we want everything to be as flush as possible. So I'm just going to be using one of these. Uh, all, not washing wheels, like they're basically different grit sanding wheels. And just go over the edge real quick. This is the lowest grit one that I have, and it's 
obviously used a lot because it's super tiny and they're normally about that size. And I've already done that to both of the brass ball type things, or domes. So, how we're going to put all this together is we're going to sweat solder this. So, to do that, I don't need to heat this piece yet. This is going to just go off to the side. But I will have to put solder onto these, and whatever one of these I'm going to end up using. So, to get a feel for what these are going to look like on here. Here's the domed one. And the ball one. So the ball one sticks up a lot more. So I'm going to go with the domed one. And this is probably what most people are going to be using. So to get this all set up, I'm going to make sure to put these onto my soldering area. And make sure that they're both whatever way you want to be facing down. Because we're going to be putting solder on the back of them. So I'm going to take some flux and put it onto both wing pieces. And then with some tweezers, I'm going to take some little chips of hard solder and place it on them. So for the top like feather part, I'm going to put two pieces because of how much area it is. And all the rest of them put one very small piece. So now all I need to do is heat both of them until the solder flows and then stop. And be very careful doing this because you can melt these really easily. What I'm doing right now is drying the flux. There we go. And you always want to be moving your flame around. If you keep it in one spot, you're pretty much guaranteed to melt what you're working with. Alright, that's all I want it to do. And I'll go over to the next one and dry the flux. And there we go. So once we have that all done. We need to pickle these. So this is how I'm going to have my sweat soldering set up. It's just a thick metal screen that I'll be able to heat everything from underneath. So I'm going to place this and I'm going to flux the entire piece. and make sure to put it in a place that it's not going to be all wobbly and that you can get to the back of it. So 
So I'm going to place probably two pieces of hard solder. in the center here, and then I'm going to place the dome piece over the top of it. If you're going to be using the ball one, then you would do the same thing we did with the wing pieces, and put a piece of solder onto it, and then melt it on there, and then sweat solder it to this piece. So what I'm going to do now is wait for this to completely dry on its own as we're waiting for everything to pickle. And then once I get everything out, I'll put everything back on here. So now everything's cleaned up and this is all dry. These are the pieces that we just soldered. And I'm going to put them on there with a little bit more of flux on them. and get everything all nice and lined up. Okay, now that everything's like that, I can start heating everything from underneath. and keep some sort of tweezers handy because stuff is going to move around. I'm actually going to heat it from the top a little bit. Now underneath. Okay, we want everything to glow pretty much evenly without melting anything. So that should be completely attached and soldered now. So I'm just going to let it cool down without quenching it because I don't really want to deal with it warping a little bit on me when it cools down. If you cool down too fast, it can bend. And I want it to be pretty flat. Alright, so here it is, cooled down. And I put it in water after it cooled down for a while. And it looks pretty good. Everything seems to be attached. And now I need to throw it into the pickling solution to clean off everything. And then start polishing it up. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up now using one of the 120 grit uh, polishing slash sanding discs that I have. And I like these because they can get in between a lot of the cracks and crevices that you normally can't. And it's going to kind of smooth everything off, kind of like how this one is. And I'll show you a side by side right now. So as you can see, the polished one has a lot of smooth edges and everything, and that's 
partly because I polished it. And I'm going to start taking this one down and cleaning it up and making sure everything looks good before polishing it. You don't want to stay in one spot too long with this type of um, wheel because you'll start digging into your piece. But it can take out a lot of little scratches and nicks that are deeper than what a polishing compound would get off. This is also going to clean off any of the copper that you'll be able to see on your uh, brass. And this can make the piece very hot, so you can use the little polishing rubber tipped finger things that I have, which I'm going to be switching over to. It does look like I got a really good solder joint right here between the copper and the silver. A lot better than I did when I put the actual ball one on, just because they're not 100% flat, and this one was. So I'm going to move from 120 grit up to 400 grit. And like I have in all my videos, I'll have links to all the tools I'm using in the description. So if you want to get any of them, you can. And if you do get anything from the description, they are usually affiliate links, which means I get a small kickback for anything you purchase at no extra cost to you. So if you want to help me out and get the stuff that I use, feel free to use those. If not, just search for them on whatever website I suggested to buy them on, and I get no affiliate commission. Either way, I want you to be able to have the tools needed to make the stuff that you're working on. So this is going to be the last um, sanding disc I'm going to use, which is a thousand grit. They have higher ones too. It goes up to I think two to three thousand. And this thousand grit actually heats this up a lot more. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to use some polishing compound and a polishing wheel. So here's my polishing compound. Um, I cannot remember how to pronounce the brand of this one, but I will probably put it on the screen now and then make sure to leave links to it but this is what I use for almost everything there are lots of different ones that you can use and before I start doing that and burn my fingers I'm going to put on some of these little 
finger guards. Yeah, these help a lot, and I regret not getting these sooner. And they're pretty cheap, too. You get enough to fit all the fingers on both your hands. So you don't have to polish this. You can just leave it at the uh, brushed look if that's what you prefer, or if you're just not comfortable with polishing. So even with these on, if this gets hot enough, it will start to heat up through your hands. So now that I have it as polished as I want it to be, I just need to put some jump rings onto it and clean it off using some soapy water and a toothbrush. And if you don't know how to make jump rings like these ones, I have a video showing how I make them and I'll make sure to put it in a card or link it in the description. Also, when it comes to jump rings like this, you can choose to leave them open like this or close them. But if you do close them, you're going to have to do that and attach them before polishing the piece because you're going to have to um, solder them shut. And just so you know, these uh, jump rings are three millimeter on the inside. So I used a three, mil three millimeter um, shaft basically to wrap them around. And then the size of the wire itself is 1.3 millimeters thick. So whatever gauge that translates to. So I'm gonna go wash this off now and then I'll show you the finished product. So here it is all done. I also use some darkener on the silver to add a little bit more to it. So you'll see it around the wings and around the middle part. And probably going to clean that up a little bit more after this and maybe redo that. But for the most part, this is exactly how the finished product would look. So if you like these and you don't have the means to make one or if you just want to buy one for someone, um, I'm actually going to be selling them on my Etsy store. So I'll make sure to leave a link in the description and probably tag the first comment of the video with a link with all the other stuff. Well, other than that, if you liked the video and you found it helpful, feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or concerns about how I made these, leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I try to get out videos every week. And thank you again for watching and see you guys next time.